to function as a family in the Philippines. Um, this is something we seem to be moving away from in the West, unfortunately. It's why you find cultures from China, Pakistan, India, etc., often do well in the West because they can monetize on ventures that aren't viable for individuals. Uh, for example, you'll see the family run um, Chinese restaurant, you'll see the family run um, corner shop, etc., where the people that are in that rest, uh, restaurant or shop may actually already have another job, but they're obligated as a family um, to look after the main business, which is normally their parents. The Philippines, I find, works well in a similar environment. Um, I know a lot of expats will tell you, run away from the family, run away, move to another area. Myself, I, let's put it this way, I've renovated my in-laws bedroom and extended it this, well, the last two months. Um, and some of the guys think, well, you're just crazy. Okay. Um, I've got a municipal judge that's in the family. I've got um, a general in the the police. I've got um, fairly wealthy and influential members of the family, as well as the fact that my in-laws do a lot for me. Um, you probably heard me say about before where somebody will go to get my groceries for me or somebody will process my paperwork. That's normally my father-in-law. Never grumbles about it. It's like when I wanted the water tower made, he welded it. No payment, just did it. You know, we just function as a group. And I'll be honest with you, like the West, if you can get people to pull in the same direction, everybody sees the benefit. Right now, we've got our properties to rent in the Philippines. There are, there's two available at the moment, but I'm tempted to make two more available. Um, one of those will then become, uh, the, the rent off it will cover the cost of everything in our little domain. But at the same time, my in-laws will look after it without even asking for an income off it. They will look after our properties as their own. Um, they look after everything. My car, my motorbike, etc. I know it's safe. No, I will be honest with you. I know other people have had major problems. For example, um, somebody's brother-in-law um, uses all the fuel in the vehicle that his well his brother-in-law uh, in the UK leaves when he leaves Cebu when he leaves him a full tank of fuel etc um, you'll find repairs you say all oh, the brakes are gone and it's like oh how much is it 10,000 and then you find out it's only been about six and he's pocketed the other four but not everybody is like that you can take the assumption that everybody's like it, but it's a bit like the West. If everybody assumes everybody's ripping each other off, you get no progression. But if somebody rips you off and you find out about it and then just cut them off later, you've learned a lesson. It doesn't mean everybody's like it, because at the end of the day, you need to do what works for you. And for me, what works is actually everybody helping each other. Long term, it means that being in Europe, the properties are looked after. Long term, it means if I need anything doing, it's not a problem. It's like, um, oh, what's this sticker up here? <laughs> Just noticed that. Um, my brother-in-law, for example, because somebody uh, mentioned about doing some more stuff in the Philippines. Um, now, I'll be honest with you, I could say to my brother-in-law, because there's a camera upstairs in my apartment, can you go and video this for me? And he wouldn't even expect to be covered for fuel. Because we just function as a group. You know, at the end of the day, that's what you want. That, that, that for me, is a family structure. You know, me and my brothers are like that. We're not expecting payout off each other. We look after each other. My father 
doesn't expect money off me and I don't expect money off him but at the same time I've had it before where I've just gone shopping in Birmingham which is about an hour's drive away from his place and he's needed me to go back for a emergency I just do it I don't even think twice on it so it's no different in the Philippines when you start getting everybody to say we're all part of the same thing here we're going in the same direction you know if I benefit everybody benefits and if they benefit everybody's happy and that's one of the cultural things that I think expats could embrace more and I would, like I said I will be honest with you I know a lot of people that have a lot of problems with their in-laws but at the same time I think a lot of it is how they deal with it because a lot of people will not confront in the right way there's an etiquette to all this it's about not people people not losing face etc this is why I say to people when somebody goes oh well in Philippine culture it's this I will go okay that's fair enough I won't disagree with you but I'm bill payer and it's not in my culture would you agree because it's very hard for them to come back from that argument but when you go get stuffed or whatever you're creating a rejection you're making them have an excuse to say you're the bad person but when you turn around and they go well my argument is in my culture we do this and then you go okay I'll agree with you but that's not my culture that way they don't know how to deal with it because you're telling the truth it isn't in your culture the culture in the West is a lot of it is actually the other way around your parents want you to go off and be successful in the West they don't want to become a burden to you they want to see that you're successful where in Asia there's often this burden of debt where they'll say well you got to pay for us we want to retire now and I'm like this doesn't make sense and I'm not saying it's wrong what I'm saying is wrong is the time frame because if you have this culture where I want to retire and my kids are going to pay for my pension fund I don't retire at 40 I retire at 50, 60 because my kids need to establish their own lives first anyway but in the Philippines it can often be a lot younger as such they, their kids have not established their own lives so already they're pulling things backwards because your kids need to get a home they need to own their own home lot of land etc and have the basics but if you go right I'm 30 uh, my kids are uh, well so let's just say 38 my kids have just left school now they now can look after me I'm going I'm quitting work and going home um, your kids a ain't gonna get a great job because their education level is not fantastic yet and even in the West it, you, up to about 25 you struggle to get a decent wage so already they're not gonna get paid well um, next they're sitting there going well, what's the point of working because I give my parents everything and this is why it starts rolling the whole family back but if you turn around and say okay um, I want you to get on with your lives but you will be looking after me once I retire at 55 um, and I know that's a lot a lot older than most people in the Philippines retire because I see jobs where they don't want people over 35 even applying but the whole point of this being is you shouldn't become a burden so early on and I think this is where the culture has changed over time I don't believe historically that was acceptable before um, I can't see it working that way you know everybody pulls their weight and this is why I, I try to go the other way and try and pull everyone together and say look we're not talking retirement we're not talking about we're going to live off somebody else or whatever what we talk about is we develop as a family you know if I'm supporting um, businesses etc it creates stability for um, the, the hierarchy 
The easiest way to describe this, I suppose, I know I'm waffling on a little bit, is it's a pyramid. At the pyramid at the top is me, my wife, and then our kids, then my father-in-law, uh, mother-in-law, and sister and brother-in-law. Then it goes down to the extended family. You know, for example, it just goes down like that. The idea being that you need to keep the top of the structure functioning as much as possible, but at the same time, if you're somewhere down here, that responsibility is you're supposed to help everybody else as well. You're not supposed to become the burden of the person above you who becomes the burden of the person above them, blah, 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 blah all the way up, or do what often happens in the Philippines, everybody goes to granddad or whatever. What happens is you turn around and go, right, well, if you need support, you need to go to your um, uncle. Your uncle then needs, to, if he hasn't, can't help you, he goes to the next tier on it. So everybody supports each other. So it's, it's got to be justified. Um, and I find it works. I really do. Okay, we've cut out, um, put it, put it bluntly but nicely, dead wood, um, where they were more interested in uh, monetizing. <laughs> I'll put it polite. But at the same time, what's the negative effect on that? Nothing. Okay, we don't talk to them anymore. But so what? Everybody else has prospered. When you have people come to your house that are hoping to push you down at some point, and then suddenly your neighbor couldn't wait to tell them, we now own the building and lot next door as well as the one that we're currently in, it pushes them down. But that was not the point. The whole point is, is you're trying to get everybody to see that you function as a group, you function as a family, you have a position of strength. Um, and that's basically it. This is why I say um, being family orientated is extremely important, but getting that family to function in one direction is the most important thing you can do. Thanks for watching.